it was successful, and then, it, but it kept growing and it stayed. It keep it stayed, um, and uh, I, after a while, I started to think about well, one really should think about a sequel, and that we tried ooh, five years ago, and it defeated us. And then it restarted the engine about a year, two years ago, actually. I think two years ago. I suddenly had this simple, very simple idea that why not let's do this? Why not follow the demise of Lucius and where he went to? Because he was the one living factor from the original film, apart from his mother, Connie, uh, Lucilla. Well, when you're put out to, into the woods by your mother to say, go with this man, he will look after you. You're sending him into the wilderness where you will eventually, within a day or two, lose track of him completely forever. So th there's that to it. Then he turned up one day, years, months later. When you live off the desert by yourself, you become a toughened entity yourself. You become independent. So in a way, that's his education. So by the time he's a teen, he can really look after himself. So by the time he settles in, wanders in, to the walls of Numibia. No one has any idea as a prince of Rome. He in, in, involves himself in the most likely thing to do to join the army. The only problem is with him is he's reddish hair and blue eye. So he's a stranger in a strange land. That's where we find him. She has been a survivor because I think because she, she is such a blue blood, probably the bluest in Roman history, being the daughter of Marcus Aurelius. So when a, a son comes on in the arena it, with a beard and with long hair, there's no way she's going to recognize Lucius. Um, it's only the habits that ring a bell with her that can be in the DNA from the father, Maximus, whose habit was to pick up dirt before he fought, because in that earth you may die. Denzel said, you really want me? Okay, boom, that's it. And Denzel, I did, I tend to, I draw a lot. I can really draw. And so my drawing is my textbook. And so I tend to draw every film I do as storyboards. Not, they're not stick figures. Every film I do is like a, a detailed comic. And I literally will draw every scene. So I already started to draw Denzel how I saw him. So I tend to cast people. I usually have a physical type in my head. And when you're drawing, you're already starting to see people in the role. And so my, my drawing, drawing is more than my sketchbook. It's my plan. It's my blueprint. Music to me is language. And it's the, it's the final dialogue. And you're writing a new language, which is appropriate for the film, and gives the film that added dynamic as and when you may need it, right? Um, and sometimes... Is silence is music. To say, I don't want music, this is silent here. Silence is music. It's a statement, a sound statement. Arthur's like, you know, the expert, by now he's the expert on medieval architecture, medieval Rome, and anything period, I tend to jump on, I'll say, oh, oh, here we go, Arthur. Here we go again. But Arthur is, a, you know, I'm a, in a way, I was a production designer, and and Arthur, to me, is one of the best I've ever worked with, without question. My name is Paul Meskel. I play Lucius in Gladiator 2. The first Gladiator obviously holds a huge amount of weight for not just myself, but like a, a huge amount of people across the world. So it's not lost on me what, um, what we as a cast of actors and, and Ridley are, are stepping into. Ridley Scott's the king of, of 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 cinema, and especially this this genre, he's so beloved. He, he, I mean, it's it's a total pinch yourself moment. If if Ridley comes knocking, you just say yes, and uh, and uh, to have worked as closely with him on this is one of those definitely changed my life. One, it's definitely been a career highlight for me. Just to kind of see the way a master's brain works. He was incredibly generous with me and his talent and sharing his knowledge with me and, and uh, just uh, uh, an absolutely mad experience.
Lucius is uh, the son of Lucilla. We meet him at the start of the film in Numidia, which is in present day terms is North Africa. And the film kind of opens with an invasion of the Roman army into Numidia. Um, that sequence is absolutely insane. We kind of see him dragged back into, um, into Rome. He has an uh, intense dislike and anger towards what Rome in that context represents. And that's kind of his, that's where we meet him at the start of the film. All of the things that we see in the, in the film in terms of like flooding the Colosseum, wild animals, all of those things, when I first read the script, I was like, this feels fictitious. And then reading up about it, it's like all, all of these things happened. It was like, it was like the greatest show on earth. The, the production values and what the Roman emperors put into these things, because they, they weren't just games, they were these celebrations and they were these offerings to the gods. Um, but all of the things that you see in the film, it's recorded that it happened. Pedro is one of my good friends now and what you see is what you get with him. He's got a, an amazing capacity of uh, retaining the version of the human being that he is behind closed doors with the world. And I think that's a particular skill that I'm envious of in the way that he conducts himself. Um, he's hilarious. He's an incredibly talented actor. And as a fan of his work, I'm just really excited for people to see um, what he does in this film. Yeah, it's quite extraordinary. This was a different approach for me than any of the other roles that I've played previously. There was a big um, focus on the physical preparation for this. Um, but there's something interesting in this film where the story is actually very simple. It follows a, a template of kind of a, a hero versus villains story and arc and how they come into conflict. But what's interesting about this is that the characters are very complicated and within a simple story, their kind of complexities are allowed to develop but at a pace that I think is satisfying for an audience. So for me, the psychology of Lucius was very clear from the first time that I read it. But the big preparation for me was kind of scale of performance. And I think having Ridley at the center of it, whose only interest is the the talent for which with he hired us as actors. That's what he wants. And you've got to kind of remove your ego and leave it at the door and kind of just step into it. Connie Nielsen's like a, a wonderful human being. Um, she plays my mother in the film. She's got a kind of wonderful dexterity with films of this scale, like uh, knows her way around them in a way that I thought was really interesting to watch her work. She is the emotional heartbeat of the film. She's the person who has the most information for the characters' lives in, in, in the film. And uh, I, I just think it's a wonderfully um, elegant performance. Denzel is one of the greatest actors to ever walk planet Earth. His performance in this is like so unbelievably colorful. Him and Ridley together working, working on something with the amount of films that they've shot. But the thing that I keep being struck by is how you read certain scenes that he played and you, and you look at them on the page and then what he delivers on the day is so unbelievably playful and colorful and dynamic. And again, it ties back to the fact that he's just been there and done that and uh, knows how to navigate character in a way that um, if I could I mean this sincerely, if I could scratch the surface of that in 20 years time, I'd be incredibly, incredibly uh, lucky and grateful. The kind of neuroses that Joe, with which Joe plays uh, his emperor is incredibly interesting when you, when you balance that with Fred's kind of true madness. Like he, Fred's like actually more on like f mentally unwell and Joe's more neurotic. And I think it's a really clever choice that they both, that they both made. And I think, um, we're definitely all, the three of us in particular are, are, are pinching ourselves in terms of having access to the actors that we have around us in terms of experience and then King Ridley at the top just calling the shots. It's like something that isn't lost on us. Maximus is such an unbelievably iconic character. And I think when you see Lucius throughout the start of the film and you don't have this information yet, that the minute that reveal is made, 
you suddenly it suddenly makes sense that this is what this this character in Lucius is a born survivor because of who his father is. It's in his blood. What are the things that we inherit from our parents? And this film just dials it up to a hundred in, in the fact that that Maximus is just a born survivor and, and that's probably one of the main questions that an audience will have for Lucius is like how does he manage to survive this level of violence? And I think it's because of who his father is. There was a moment stepping out in, in kind of gladiator armor where I was like, okay, whoa, this is, this looks like it's gonna happen. That's a harder thing to do when you're aware of the legacy when you're stepping into it. That's obviously a heightened moment. When you're stepping into the armor and you're in front of a mirror, you're like, okay, this is, this is the template of what I have to fill. But it's weirdly seeing the armor and seeing what that outline was, I was like, I've got to fill this now. And that's the job. You're looking at like Arthur Max, John T. Yates, Dave Grossman, Iana and Giuliano, like you're dealing with department heads here who are at the top of their game and who've worked with Ridley kind of religiously through the years. Having seen the film, you really see the detail of, of those department heads and, and, and it, it's, it's, it's mastery. Like you look at what, what they've all done in their, in, in their individualized kind of disciplines and it's like, it's top end production design, hair and makeup, costume design, like, Profound, pr just profoundly lucky to work with people of that talent. That was my first taste of a Ridley film, first day on set. We were kind of kept in these holding tents and Ridley comes out, cigar in hand, pats me on the back and goes, uh, your nerves are no good to me. And it was an amazing piece of advice and one of actually immense care where he was like, he saw, he was like, I get that this is huge but I've hired you to do your job and I trust you to do it. So leave all that, things that is ultimately like ego related, leave it in the tent and come out and do your job. And that was like, he gave me permission to feel um, like I was able to step into it. And, uh, and Morocco was kind of a blur. It was, it's a big, huge action sequence at the top of the film that I think is one of Definitely one of the best that Ridley's ever put to film, but also I think it stands up there with kind of any kind of period battle scene that I, I've ever seen, certainly. The scale is huge. The kind of buzz of the film is huge. But if you boil it down, the story is simple and the characters are complicated. And I think it, it gives an audience a real opportunity to invest. Ultimately, what you want to see is how, how these uh, complicated characters are navigating this. Uh, to my mind, it's a simple story and one that's very uh, relevant in today's day and age. The movie starts with the Roman Empire led by General Acacius, whom I play, um, invading Numidia, uh, which is northern Africa, where our lead, played by Paul Meskel, uh, is hiding out. And um, it's just a perfect way to start the movie and in my eyes, an incredible homage to how the, uh, how the first movie starts. And Acacius is the general of Rome. He's leading the army into the invasion. What got me interested in the movie are such big and obvious things. One, being Ridley Scott, and two, being the first movie. Um, I saw the, the first movie multiple times in the movie theater when it was released. Uh, in 2000, wasn't it? And, um, and I grew up watching Ridley's movies. And uh, so many, he might be the only director that I can say has multiple films in my top 10. And uh, I'd be in anything under his lens. What makes the original so memorable and um, the reason behind it having such major impact, I think, is that it's a classic Hollywood cinema, uh, but with really emotionally rich characters, performances, um, and storytelling. And there's something very, very grand in scope, elegant, sophisticated, bloody, sexy. It's all the things that really sort of like fill in the word epic. There are so many important ways to thread this 
sequel um, to its original source. And the best way to do that, I think, is with Lucilla's character and, um, and uh, her son, Lucius. And Acacius really lives for, serves Lucilla first and the Roman Empire second. He's a soldier, not a politician, as he states often in the movie. Um, and so he knows who to honor. And, um, and to protect that with his life. There are so many reasons behind wanting to be in this movie. And, um, and, and, and one of them is Paul Meskel. Uh, I think as this younger generation of actors emerges, I would definitely make him the lead of my movie. <laughs> It's an incredible challenge to sort of uh, step into a role like Lucius because um, of how memorable the first movie is. And if there's anybody that could do it, it's Paul. And um, I think that what he brings to it is, is incredible talent. Um, uh, an, an incredible athleticism, and he's a babe. Those are the only three things you need. Connie Nielsen, to me, is iconic in the role of Lucilla in the first movie, and if, you know, I'm being honest, totally my favorite character. Um, I find her to be the most complex, and I've been having conversations with her from the perspective of Acacius, but also just from my personal opinion. I'm, I'm like, you know, I think that she's the smartest person in the room uh, and was so and has found all of these complex ways to navigate her existence in, the, in a world of men and uh, to survive. And so I just love that. And I feel like, you know, again, there isn't anybody um, like her who can fill those shoes within this world. Denzel Washington is, you know, an untouchable movie star. <laughs> and, you know, that has to do with um, uh, an unmatchable talent and an unmatchable star quality, especially for my generation or the kinds of, um, uh, uh, big time talent that you grow up watching in the cinema. The star power is incomparable, in my opinion, and held up by the fact that he's uh, an unbelievable actor. And, um, and on film, on stage, in front of the camera and behind the camera, I find Ridley to be the hardest working man in Hollywood and the most direct, challenging, charming. Um, I think that he is this incredible contradiction of having such specificity in terms of what the visual setup is and yet he delights utterly at the spontaneity that an actor will come up with, um, something that he um, would never have thought of himself and absolutely um, sort of uh, um, depends on in a way that you wouldn't expect. Because it has to be such a controlled environment to be as big as it is, and yet somehow he finds a way to keep it completely organic and spontaneous. In movies like this one, I think that, uh, you know, the important departments of costume design, hair and makeup, tell as much of the story as do the words on the page and the performances of the actors. Um, I wouldn't have a character if it weren't for what I was wearing and how I looked. It is the best I've ever looked. It's just like the highest talent 
out there and yet still giving the space to collaborate and to kind of uh, fit the design to, 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 to each individual um, character. I'm so grateful to have gotten to experience this because I've up to now for most of Ridley's career have experienced it as a spectator and um, and have always just like eyes wide open dazzled by so much of it and to get to be practically part of the experience of making one of his movies is really something I didn't expect to happen. Um, and also for it to live up to the expectation in the way that it did. I think location is everything, especially when it comes to telling a story. And if you can have the real thing, um, it really makes a difference, or at least the kind of uh, area in the world that Malta provides as far as the sets of Gladiator are concerned, the size of this Colosseum. I've been on some major sets, and um, I've not been on a set like this one. I didn't think I could see something bigger than some of the things that I've seen, and this is definitely the biggest. The power behind the throne is kept by any means necessary. I don't think he was interested in the throne. I think he was interested in power and controlling those two. I don't think he thought they were qualified. I don't think he thinks anyone is better or greater or smarter than him. And I love that. <laughs> First of all, he's a wonderful young man. And one of the things he brings is that he's a, he's a a consummate professional. He's obviously very talented, very humble, and uh, the, the sky's the limit for him. I mean, uh, it, it, it was almost a bit of a proud father kind of thing for me, you know, just watching him do his thing. And and uh, he was saying to me today how he, you know he had to keep a straight face and you know and, and all of that. And, and he's just a, a wonderful actor, a wonderful human being, and and, and quite quite talented and. Like I said, the sky's the limit for him. Credit to Ridley. He really put a wonderful cast together. He, he painted the canvas. There's all types uh, of people and, 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 and talents. And uh, it seemed like the, the whole was, was bigger than any of us individuals. There's a, a size and a scope that the landscape itself brings, that, uh, that Malta brings. And Malta is a character in our film. It's beautiful. It's, it's the greenest green I've ever seen. I don't know what they put in the soil, but uh, it's just a beautiful place, beautiful people. Ridley's a genius and he's a visionary. I mean, what he sees and how he puts it together and his team, you know, I don't have to think or worry about anything. Just put the, put the gear on and, 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 and do, my, do my part. I think this is the biggest film I've been on. It's big, it's huge, it's, you know, Cecil B. DeMille on steroids. It's, it's you know, it's huge. You know, he's not gonna have 100 guys, he's gonna have 1,000 of them. You know, he's not gonna have 20 horses, he's gonna have 20 scores. Of, it's just, it makes the job easy. Everywhere you turn, you feel like you're in that world. It was all a spectacle, just the size of the damn Coliseum. I was like, they built the Coliseum. Malta is a character. It, the, the, the way the, 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 the stone walls and you, you, you can just get in the character riding to work. You can feel the history here and it was the perfect place to shoot. And I'm glad that I came here and the people are even more beautiful than the island itself. When people say, what do you want people to get from a film? I say, it depends upon what they bring to it. In this case, don't overthink it. Don't bring anything. Bring some popcorn and whatever your favorite beverage is and just enjoy. It's a ride. It's a spectacle. 
it's on a grand scale. It, 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 I don't want to say movies aren't made like this anymore. I don't know, but just riding past what looked like thousands of soldiers and the beautiful costumes and the colors and the swords and the shields and the horses and the, just all of it. It's just, it's more than a movie for me. Hi, my name is Connie Nielsen. I play Lucilla, daughter of Marcus Aurelius in Gladiator 2. I could not believe this story they came up with. It was so brilliant and I just thought that is a fantastic situation for me as a character to be in. And it's also something that once again really, really speaks to a kind of deep human experience. In my case, motherhood. And again, sacrifice. And this, this extraordinary thing of having to sacrifice something that is the most important thing in your life. And I just felt that that was such a compelling story to be a part of and to play. She has a love in her life that she never expected to feel. Acacius, a former comrade of Maximus, has not only become her champion, but is the leading uh, general, leader of the army, um, in this quest to continue to expand the empire. Lucilla is living this nightmare where she does not know if her child is still alive. And she just, like any mother would, just yearns for that one thing that she loves more than anything else in the whole world. But she has had, out of duty, she's had to choose to let go of him so that she could stay behind and try to fight to save Rome instead of following her heart and going with her child to keep him safe. To Lucilla, power is uh, something that you can only use in the name of the people and only if the people has given that action legitimacy. But to Macronus, power is something to do with his own ego. It has something to do with how to feel powerful over everyone and something that therefore is consumed only by him and not in the name of the collective. I remember the first time I saw Paul's work and I was just so blown away with his performance. So I was excited to see what he would bring to this troubled kid, to Lucius, who is a troubled young man who now has to figure out how to step up, step out of your rage and step into your duty, into your future. How will you do that? And so I knew this was going to be amazing. Pedro Pascal plays Acacius and I, along with the rest of the world, am of course completely bowled over by how cool how gorgeous and funny and kind that this man is. Like, just superb. And it was just a very natural fit when we you know, started playing domestic scenes of uh, joy and, and, and comfort. And uh, I think uh, just he's an incredible Acacius. Getting back, um, working with Ridley, experiencing how Ridley, you know, has at this point even more technology at his fingertips than he had 24 years ago. And I've always admired how Ridley uses these very classical storytelling devices and at the same time really incorporates whatever technology is available to us right then, right there. And obviously technology has really evolved a lot in filmmaking and he is right up to speed. He has just, if anything, amped up the spectacle even more. And he just has an extraordinary team 
as always, with him. I am just loving being here. I, I feel such gratitude to have, you know, this option, this opportunity to continue to tell these big stories. Um, they, these stories that can both t touch people's hearts and, and make them, them and their experiences feel seen. And then at the same time to entertain people and for a moment give them something else to think about. And um, to be able to, in this day and age, create films at this scale is, I don't know, I feel so blessed. I play Emperor Gator, who is a sadistic, ruthless emperor. Uh, he rules Rome alongside his fraternal twin, Emperor Caracalla, played by the brilliant Fred Heckinger, who is as sadistic and uh, unpleasant as his brother. So they're ruling the roost together in a pretty unsavoury way. It's rare that cinema can hit that uh, sweet spot in the way that the first film did, and it was something that we were all very aware of on this film, the fact that uh, there was such a legacy to, to follow up on, and it was one that we took pretty seriously as well, very seriously. What does it mean to me to be a part of this story? It means a lot. I think I grew up watching the films of Sir Ridley Scott, and uh, the first film was definitely a film that I get misty-eyed over. So to be a part of this world and to venture into this kind of, this nostalgic endeavor with Ridley was uh, an extraordinary experience. Emperor Gator is motivated by uh, neuroses, fear of losing power, um, greed, um, all traits in leaders that are pretty deplorable and he is one of those characters that is, is full of insecurity, lacks integrity but has an enormous amount of power which is a dangerous, dangerous combination. The dynamic between Gator and Caracalla is pretty fraught. I think there's a lot of competition and a lot of uh, stress and uh, disappointment, codependence and fear and the fact that they are mutually kind of uh, beholden and need each other in this kind of extraordinary situation that they're in. They're totally unqualified and adolescent and distrusting of everyone around them and I think that there is a it's a very interesting kind of dynamic to play and I was very lucky in the scene partner I had in, in Fred. He's an extraordinary actor and brilliant person. Working with Paul was fantastic. He was so committed straight from the off. It was very clear that he wasn't there to mess around at all, um, but also not to take it too seriously. Uh, he was putting in the work for months with stunt training and was uh, totally committed and it was very inspiring just watching his level of dedication, uh, his leadership. He leads this film extraordinarily well. I can't wait for people to see him. What was it like working with Denzel Washington? Well, it's not every day that you uh, see an actor in that echelon uh, at work. I've been a fan of his for since I was a kid. I've grew up watching his films and the prospect of sharing a frame with him was uh, pretty crazy. And he was consummate, professional, listened, had ideas. And he's Denzel Washington, so like he'd say that uh, he's a good actor feels like banal. Connie Nilsson brought a, a very valuable thing amongst all of this madness, which was experience. None of us had been through this experience before and Connie brilliantly played Lucilla in the first film, so she was able to kind of uh, be a little bit of a mast in the storm that we found ourselves in. Uh, she gave us some perspective, some guidance, and um, yeah, and took us on a boat. I was very looking forward to meet Pedro on this film. I was a fan of his and have been for a while. He is heavenly. He's a very funny man. He's very committed, he's very talented and uh, him and Paul had these kind of very heroic action sequences that they were both committed to.
What was it like working with Sir Ridley Scott? It was pretty extraordinary. I grew up watching his films. Um, the range of his filmography is, is incredible. There's such range in his work and his ability to kind of create these worlds, uh, these diverse worlds, and take you on a journey with him is, uh, is pretty extraordinary. There's uh, an energy on a Ridley Scott f set that is uh, fascinating, it's thrilling, it's uh, unnerving and uh, unique. The size and scope of Gladiator 2 is pretty difficult to put into words. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. I don't think I'll see anything like it again. We had 25,000 extras. Uh, 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 kind of a horde of, of horses and stunt performers, set builds like you've never seen before, and some fight sequences that I'd kind of boggle the mind. Uh, it's a scale that demands to be seen in a theatre, uh, it demands to be seen with people, and I can't wait for people to see it. It's rare that you get to go to a place like Malta, that has uh, <laughs> this world built there that is championed by a very seasoned and brilliant director and visionary director with a cast as uh, exciting, fresh, but also experienced as this, with Denzel Washington, Paul Meskell, Fred Heckinger, Connie Nielsen. Um, they were extraordinary scene partners and uh, wonderful people to spend time with. It doesn't always happen like that. So it's an experience that's changed me as a person, I think, to kind of have a look at it and to bear witness to something as, uh, as just the scale of it. You can't really put into words. They're both like wicked, but also um, I think very emotionally uh, vulnerable and needy at the same time. Um, and they both like live for each other and to destroy one another. Um, and so I was really interested in building that with Joe. Like I felt like we were, we wanted to be independent but we also are completely a duo. Joseph Quinn is a beautiful actor. Um, he's just remarkably present and deep and um, inspired. When Joe and I were working on the scenes, it felt like we were trying to <laughs> hold some empire together. You know, we, we would, we really thought about this, at first at least, as a double act. Uh, so working with him was just a great pleasure. He's playing a really <laughs> complicated, wretched, scary, strange, funny, beautiful person. Um, and he's playing that person with full commitment at all times. These brothers are weird mirrors. They're completely different, but they're always surveilling what the other one is doing. So there's a constant sense of competition, but also love and um, need for being taken care of. Filming this was like a gladiatorial arena. The way the camera crew is working is like that of warring gladiators. You have eight cameras that are competing for the shots and they're trying to make sure they're not in each other's frames and they're hiding in the, in the masses of people with cloaks on and cameras behind them to try and get the right shot. And you realize it's like the cameras are attacking one another. The entire thing is this full on war of uh, what is the most exciting thing? What is the biggest, most convincing, insane thing that could happen on screen right now. It's an incredible cast. It's an extraordinary group. What Denzel does in this movie is masterful. You're, you're, you're seeing an artist who always operates the highest caliber, who never does not entertain and never does not show you truth. They built the Coliseum. They built it in the same place that they built it the first time, except 25% uh, larger.